um, a lot of these spots that we might just whoa. <laughs> What, dude? Foreplay presented by Barstool Sports. It is February 27th, 2024. Uh, We got the whole squad. I don't really know where to begin. There's a lot of different things going on kind of in the golf world at this point. I think um, probably the biggest is our Players Championship merch, which we launched on Friday (laughs) of last week. Flew through a bunch of it online. Uh, There's still some that you can get, uh, and we're going to have a bunch at the tournament as well. I'm wearing the hat that says Sawgrass. I got the shirt. I got the hoodie on. All this stuff is really, really, really good. We've talked about it a lot. We kind of are, I think we did like eight tournaments last year. We're only doing three, I believe, three or four this year. So we're quite, well, we're being much more selective about it. Players is just as clean as it gets with the gold man, 17th uh, hole, Sawgrass. What's the drink that they got there that I have on here? Do you remember, Dan? What's the Splash. What's the sawgrass? The splash. The sawgrass. The sawgrass Splash. Sawgrass Splash. So. Uh, the gear is incredible. Go to store.barcelosports.com. You could get it online, and you're going to be able to get it in the uh, merchandise tent at TBC Sawgrass as well, which is next week, which is crazy to think about, uh, or two weeks away. Yeah, two weeks away, which is crazy to think about, but um, that's probably the biggest news. Go check that out. Thanks to everybody who bought uh, stuff last week and over the weekend. Anthony Kim, that's probably the uh, the biggest spot that we should start. I know Dan was just whipping up a TikTok video, I believe. Uh, rumors for the last several months about Anthony Kim coming back. It's been over a decade. We went through his whole kind of uh, golf rap sheet a couple of months ago, I feel like, on the show. And we're talking about, you know, is his, uh, is his sort of image, his reputation uh, bigger even than maybe his game was, even though he was really sick at times. He's officially coming back this week. Is that a done deal, Dan? Yeah, you know, um, Danny Scoops was right on this one. You know, I, I, that's that's one of those things. It's it's funny to me, you know, I reported this, I believe, on February 1, saying he was going to play in Jeddah. And then I saw a bunch of articles come out this weekend saying sources say that Anthony Kim is going to be playing this week in Jeddah. I was like, well, you already had the source on that. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's sure very did. interesting because you're you're absolutely right where he has this sort of folklore about him, but he hasn't played in the tour event um, in, in 12 years, which is such a long time. I mean, it's an incredibly long time. If you look at if you look at the guys who he was playing against at the time, they're all done. It was like Luke Donald, Steve Stricker, like those were the top players in the world at the time when he was playing. So it's a t- completely different crop of players. And this is the thing with these with these comebacks that we have uh, that we dream about is when you're dreaming about them, it's fun because you, you you think about the great stuff, right? He's going to come back and he's going to be incredible. At a certain point, the proof is in the pudding. He can either still play or he can't. Now I don't think he would come back if he if he felt if he had no chance because he knows what good golf looks and feels like he's played it before. Um, I don't know how badly he needs money because it's an interesting you know sort of change of heart after for not coming back for so long. But I think the difference here is that Liv came around and there there was an entity that was like we'll just pay you to, and you'll just make money for playing. You know you don't really even have to with the PJ Tour. It was like I always got a kick when that first report came out where it was like he's negotiating with the PJ Tour and with Liv Golf. It's like what does it really negotiate to negotiate with the PJ Tour? Like you have your status, you can try and get sponsors invites on your own, but they can't just throw you into Riviera. They can't just throw you into the players championship where that's exactly what's happening with Liv. So it's a low stakes thing for him. He's definitely getting money just to show up. If he plays well, he'll make a lot more money. He doesn't have to grind through, you know, the corn fairy tour playing in low events. He goes straight to the top. So I'm excited to watch at least the first week. I think if he shoots 76, 76, 76, I think some of the shine wears off quickly. But we got a fun week ahead of us. Right. The question is, would Anthony Kim be playing golf again if Liv didn't exist? If it was still just the PGA Tour? I'm guessing no. I would think probably no not. Way. He would Right, because he would have to do all the things that you're saying, go through the Corn Ferry Tour and work his way up. With Liv, you show up. I don't know what. He probably got like $15 million to, just to show up. So, I mean, I'm very interested in it. We did talk about it a few shows ago where... It's it's probably more fun to talk about the folklore and being like, oh my gosh, what could be, and then for him to never come back. But for him to come back, he might he might pull Charlie Woods and shoot an eighty six. I don't know what he's gonna do. Oh God, I thought we were gonna get. Yeah. It. I didn't know if you were gonna mention it. Well, before you get to that, I want to talk about the proof in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding is a very new twist on an old proverb. The original version of the proof. The original version is the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And what it meant was that you had to try out food in order to know whether it was good or not. And they add that the word pudding itself has changed in Britain dating back centuries. Pudding meant more than just a sweet dessert. Pudding referred to a kind of sausage filling the intestines 
of some animal with minced meat and other things, something you probably want to try out carefully since that kind of food could be rather treacherous. So over the years, the original proverb has evolved and the original proof of the pudding was in the eating. So you want Trent, to try out proverb? all the stuff. Is it proverb? It's proverb. Uh, okay. But that's that's proverb. Interesting. Proverb. We haven't had a we haven't had a Frankie fact in a while. That one I knew. I in the back of my mind I knew pudding when they were using this originally wasn't delicious like chocolate pudding. It was some disgusting, just like a bunch of meat parts put together and then like baked. sausage, like some rat Ugh. tail in there. Yeah. <laughs> so the proof was there in the in the pudding. Okay, that's a good one. Did you just Google that after I said it? You were curious? No, I knew that. No. I knew oh, that. you knew that one. Nice. <laughs> you came ready. He was ready to go. That, <laughs> yeah. one, that uh, one's been kicking around in his brain. Uh, yeah, the Anthony Kim stuff, you know, I feel like we've been seeing his, a few videos here and there of his golf swing have popped up from social and whatnot. He looks like he's got the speed. It is nuts to think. I mean, is he like 40 years old now? He's 38, I believe. Yeah, I mean, he's 38 years old. He hasn't played a uh, professional golf tournament in 12 years, as you said. So... I don't know what the hell to expect out of this guy. It's a no-brainer move from Liv. I mean, if you're spending a billion dollars, a couple billion dollars that they've spent, and you're going to spend 15, 20, 30 million on Anthony Kidd, whatever the hell it is, this is probably going to get more eyeballs than John Rahm got them, right? I mean, at this point, I think more people were tuning in, at least at first, to be like, holy shit, that's Anthony Kidd's going to play. That's, that's the other thing that's hard to judge is we are, you know, right in the middle of the AK demographic, right? Like, Oh yeah, you know, high twenties, thirties guys who like remember him and remember when he was playing really well. I, it, it's hard to know if the general public even knows who he is. Like, that's a good. It's point. been it's been twelve years. You know, golf Twitter Man, definitely some, knows who he is. For something like this comeback, you really need it to be. And I keep saying it, and maybe it's very um, because we're in the world and and we have huge egos or whatever. But I think it needs to be YouTube style. I think you need to watch every single one of Anthony Kim's shots. Like, I think if you really are interested. In Anthony Kim's return, it's got to be like camera on him with a tracer, and you just get to watch Anthony Kim cam. Yeah, like I feel like when you watch this tournament, yeah. you're gonna see little bits and pieces of him, and you don't really get to feel anything. You're just like, oh, there's Anthony Kim who hit a shot, and they're like talking about him for a second, and then they go to John Round, the best golfer in the world, and we don't really care about Anthony Kim anymore. If you want me dialed in on this guy's 12 year return, I want to see everything. Just follow him with one camera and have one of the one of the the things on how wherever they're producing this video on on their channel. Make sure that that's an Anthony Kim channel. Also, I'm having trouble speaking today. I I've been getting this work done on my on my mouth. Like I've had all these things happening to me, and I've been really good about it. And I've been going, and I haven't been complaining. But he did this like back molar problem the other day, and this was like two weeks ago, and it was fine. It hurt, but something has now something's happened in where my jaw connects back here, and I can't talk anymore. I can't even open my mouth. Like I can't do that. <laughs> he ruined something this doctor the dentist ruined something at the bottom of my my jaw like really bad so that's something i'm dealing with damn yeah yeah like saliva slips out of my mouth when i speak oh no and there also needs to be with the anthony kim thing there also needs to be like the tell-all interview yeah like he need they need to sit him yes. down and be like talk to me about the last yeah. 12 years you know, like if we don't get that, that's got to be part of this comeback package. I'm expecting to see that video drop soon because that's what I really want to. Yeah, I want to watch him play golf. I want to watch him talk about what the fuck happened in the end. What have you been doing for the last 12 years? How have you avoided the cameras like your Bigfoot? What do you sound like at this point? No one's heard you speak in 12 years. Right. We need you to do that interview, Dan, because we need him to cry a little bit in that interview. Fuck, do I need to, to get to up. Do I need to get to Jeddah? Do I need to get to Saudi? I, you're right. You do need the backstory because... Again, we are all very interested in golf, so we know the Anthony Kim story. You bring up a great point, Dan. I don't know how many people on the street are aware of Anthony Kim. Like I like I, I just it's a big story to us, but and and they do complicate it. Every golf broadcast that has ever gone out always complicates it. We've had it with, with Tiger in the past where he'll tee off at eleven AM, coverage doesn't start till three PM, and we're like, what what, what are we trying to make the sport more popular or are we just trying to like fuck around and have all the sponsors? I don't yeah, they're gonna they're gonna screw this Anthony Kim thing up. They're not gonna have him. We they still need had one it, camera on him at the Genesis with Tiger Woods. There were still people texting and tweeting at us about how like how do I fucking watch this guy play golf? You had to have PGA Tour Live. It wasn't even on like regular television, which is insanity. But so dumb. You're right. In order for them to capitalize on this Anthony Kim thing, they need to go all in on it. You want to see every shot. You want to hear him talking to his caddy. And we do kind of need to. You can't just disappear for twelve years, reappear, and everyone act like everything. And you look like an old man all of a sudden, and everybody's just like, 
oh yeah, this is the same guy that was young with his giant belt buckles with all kinds of fucking swag. But unless he fires a sixty-three, like he just doesn't say anything, comes out and fires a sixty-two right now. He just faces. never speaks again. Never speaks. And we're just like, speak. holy shit, man! What's <laughs> yeah. happening? Get him a master's I just, invite. I just play. I just play. <laughs> That'd be sick, I want to believe there's someone out there that's been in a 12 year coma that was a huge golf fan before they went in and they just woke up like today and they're like, oh, Anthony Kim plays tomorrow. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not that big a deal. Oh, Anthony Kim does. plays yeah. tomorrow. Tiger Woods is playing the players. Yeah, things are pretty fucking similar. What happened in the last 12 years? <laughs> I hope they're all, like whenever these documentaries come out, like a Kanye documentary or a, a documentary about one of these really famous and really interesting people. There's usually one person in their camp that always has a camera on that is just. For whatever reason, they realize that this is going to be a big deal. And I hope for the past 12 years, Anthony Kim's right-hand guy has just been filming him. And we're going to get a documentary about him at some point. Because other than that, it's just the lost 12 years of Anthony Kim. And while that is a cool story, I need him to talk about it. I want to know what happened. Like that the, is unbelievably like the, impressive when you watch documentaries like that. How do they you know the person's so going to be a big deal? confident that they're going to build something like if, if you start a company and you do you go like the Steve Jobs route and you start something out of your garage are you cocky and confident enough to tell someone you're going to film this whole thing for the rest of our lives it's crazy and, like, I, I think it's, it's going to be the, the biggest world. thing ever I think it's no, part of the new world with the cameras no, day, though no. Kanye was like yeah. late 90s early 2000s that's the one I always think of and there's yeah, there's like a yeah but that guy PIG. sucked I hated that guy who was that guy Kanye oh, the, Kanye yeah. I hated that guy he Ka- made the whole Kanye, documentary about himself Kanye and Kanye, Kanye went, and yeah. then Kanye came but back you're right. to like, Chicago. How, think about yeah. how many. Think about. <laughs> I hated that guy, dude. And, and then Kanye and Kanye. A, a whole episode. He's like, and then Kanye went on a huge world tour. So I'm going to show you the rest of my world. It's like, <laughs> what? No, no. But I guess think about how many VHS tapes are out there of people who didn't make it. it it's, oh, yeah. It's like yeah, similar to the Tiger story say. where there's there's a there's, you know, Tiger story is one in a billion and we just so happen to watch the whole thing because he was good enough there are so many failed stories. oh yeah the hundreds There's of just thousands a, oh of them. dude my basement's filled my dad definitely thought my sister was going to be the next like britney spears he filmed every single thing in the basement doing dance routines singing making shows i'm like there's there, if she made it big in like entertainment or, or like as a singer it would have been you would have been able to make a documentary so i, I guess you see like where it all stems from is just like we only see the point zero 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 one percent of the success stories yeah, like That's every funny. dad in the country has those oh, Taylor yeah. Swift videos, except oh, Taylor yeah, Swift's yeah. just turned into the biggest celebrity <laughs> yeah. of the fucking planet. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to watch. Hopefully, he plays really well, and then it becomes a big story in the world of golf. I don't. Do we know what like team he's on or anything, Dan? Is he? So he's. I, I believe he's not going to be on a team. So I think Whoa. he's going to be. And this is another thing with Liv, where they can just do just whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. He doesn't have like a fucking league. What is that? What <laughs> yeah, is he he's, he's independent. Yeah. I mean, they have wild cards. I think Hudson Swafford is playing on a wild card this year where you're not on a team and you're ba- you basically just get. Into- but even last place in these events is like 100 grand. So, you know, there's there's money even if he finishes last in addition to whatever he got to sign up. But yeah, I don't think he's on a team. I don't think he's I don't think he's guaranteed to play all of them the rest of the year. I, I think it's sort of like Bro, a, a prove it situation. Really hard to compete with a league that makes it up as they go. It's like guerrilla warfare. It's it's like you we think we thought it was one way. We're gonna walk out there and we're gonna have tournaments and people are gonna have to qualify and there's a there's a system and Jake Knapp is a product of that system, which we're gonna talk about. But then there's live when they're just like Oh, if Anthony Kim wants to play, he's a wild card. We're like, what's a wild card? And they're like, he can just play. When Peter Malnati, Peter Malnati got an invite into AT&T, and I got so many messages from tour pros who were fucking irate, being like, they just put this guy in the field because he's on the board. Like, this is basically, you know, every live event is a signature event because it's all the same purse. This is basically them just giving him a spot. And instead of all the other live guys being like, this is ridiculous, we earned our way, they're like, yeah, this is kind of what we signed up for. This is kind of what it is. This is what we're all doing, dude. Welcome. This is pretty cool over here. (laughs) Yeah. Get in on the golf action with DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. Big shout-out to my friend Doug Gim. Uh, I took Doug Gim to finish top 10 this past Weekend, he shot a four under par final round to finish tied for eighth. It was a little bit of a dead heat, so it didn't pay out completely fully, but I still made a good amount of money. He was like plus 450, I believe, uh, to finish in the top 10. I think I ended up getting paid out like three to one. So big shout out to Doug Gim. We love him. What is a no sweat bet? It's just like missing a shot. Miss your first shot. You get another opportunity 
to score with a bonus bet back. It's like a mulligan. You guys know golf. DraftKings, hashtag DK partner. We love DraftKings, don't we, Frankie? We really do. And um, it's it's just been fun to be able to explore all the different types of ways to get involved in the game. Obviously, hockey season is um, is full swing right now, and golf is is getting there. I'm putting in all my futures now for golf, which is very, very fun, including Tiger Woods and some of those. So make sure you get involved. Hashtag DK partner. It's been great. We need Mr. Ice to get a little bit, a little bit. We need that ice to get a little bit cooler, I think, yep. is what's happening right now. I agree um, with that. I uh, the, the temperature is starting to rise just a little woo, bit too much. We can't we can't have it warm like that. We need it cold. We need no. ice. We need it frozen. So I'm with yep. you. I think he's taking a couple of days off. I do. I have a future thanks to the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook. I put a future a little while ago on the Boston Bruins to win the Stanley Cup. I just really like I like the storyline uh, of what happened with Tampa, Tampa Bay Lightning a few years ago. They had the best regular season record, President's Cup. They lost in the first round to, I believe, CBJ. Came back, won back-to-back Stanley Cups, and lost in the third. Obviously, the Boston Bruins last year, best regular season record in history, lost in the first round of Florida. I just like that storyline and then coming back and winning the Cup. Point is, DraftKings, you can get all kinds of good action going. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the code 4PLAY. That's F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y, one word. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000. If your first bet loses, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code 4PLAY. That is DraftKings Sportsbook code 4PLAY. The crown is yours. Uh, You mentioned Jake Knapp. That's a great little segue there, Trent. Uh, Front of the program, he was one of the main guys we kind of focused on. I think were you two walking with him? He's coming on. He's going to come on soon. We're going to do some Jake Knapp stuff soon. Okay. During the uh, NV5 Invitational presented by Old National Bank, at the Glen Club last year, uh, he was a guy that we focused on. Fucking just kind of the man. He's got a lot of swagger about him. He's got an insanely aesthetically pleasing golf swing. He might be, in terms of content right now, he might be the only guy that has an even prettier swing than like Grant Horvat at this point that I've seen. His tempo, he is like it's the so, new tempo really down. Nice. Oh, it looks so good. He's got effortless power. And he's just one of those stories where uh, you don't get this that often where he, not that long ago, a year and a half, two years ago, whatever it was, is kind of the the tale that's going around that he was literally trying to pay for uh, his career to try to advance by being a bouncer at a club or a bar. It's very similar. He's on basically the same trajectory, except now he just won the PGA Tour as our friend Alistair Doherty, who a couple of years ago when I met Alistair, he was caddying here in Arizona to try to literally save money so that he could try to make it on the Corn Ferry Tour. Jake Knapp, same boat. Couldn't quite make it. He he was on the Canadian tour, I believe, for a little bit. Then he made it to Corn Ferry Tour. Then he lost his status. Then he had nowhere to play. He was working as a bouncer. Next thing you know, he has a great year on the Corn Ferry Tour last year. Fifth start of the PGA Tour. Gets a fucking win in Mexico. This guy's awesome. He's got swagger. He's great. For, he's like, you know, when you talk about how you really hope golf can be sustainable on a professional level because uh, maybe we'll make room and give opportunities to, like, new stars. For whatever reason, he's kind of got that magnetism about him uh, as a golfer that you want to watch and root for the look, the swag, the swing, the whole deal. So I think him winning is overall very good for the PGA Tour. I uh, I might this might be the start of a a new little mini segment called Danny Responds because basically all of these people are always in my mentions, just freaking out at me all the time. A lot of that's a really good segment name. Danny Responds. There's a lot of people, and I don't like to do it on, on social media because it gives them juice and it gives them attention, but I'm going to respond to one thing that I saw. Some guy, some guy mentioned, I tweeted, being Why wouldn't like, it be oh, called Rappaport Response? Why wouldn't you yeah, call it Rappaport Response? Because everything can't be rap. They want to do this with rapid fire with the, with the, the, you know, the rapid fire interviews. Like, my name is, which is, we got a lot of my name going yeah, on. R is just, R has a liter, it's just alliteration more often than For something Daniel. like this, you would want to do like online rapport is what you would want to do or something. Okay. I mean. we, we're Whoa. workshopping the name. But I Daniel tweeted something saying, no, <laughs> Daniel <discusses>. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so this, I tweeted, you know, this guy's got star potential and someone responded saying, oh, star potential. He's 29 years old. Let me, let me say a few things on this. Number one, I'm 29 years old. So this one kind of hit pretty hard. <laughs> so are we, are we just saying that once you turn 29, like you just, you can't, you can't be a star anymore. You're a finished product. Let me tell you about a guy named VJ Singh. Okay. VJ Singh was born in February of 1963. When did VJ Singh win the first of his 34 PGA tour events? 
June of 1993. He was 30 years old, and then he had a Hall of Fame career in his 30s and 40s. Let me tell you about another guy, Joel Damon. Did anyone know who the fuck Joel Damon was until he was 32 or 33 years old, or maybe even 34, and they put him in a Netflix show? So I, I took it a little personal when this guy said, once you're 29, you're just, you're, you're just, you're, you know, that's, you're done in life. So he has star potential. 29 is young in golf. And fuck you for saying that 29 is like you're done. I mean, it pissed me off. He, go um, off, King. Go off. He, um, he looks like a guy that I would create in a video game, Jake Knapp. He's got the hair. Yeah. He's got the swing. The he's, he's got the speed. That's when you know. Yeah, he, he was, I think he was shotgunning beers after the win yesterday. Yeah, he is. He's, he's sponsored by the Anaheim Ducks. It's just so random. Incredible. Yeah, like so <laughs> random. Um, yeah, he's a star in the making. I, we should do a lot more with him. And I mean, we got to know him a little bit at the Corn Fairy event, but he's, he's a star. He's 29. I don't know. You can be a star when you're 29. I think, and his swing, like, because it's so, it immediately kind of joins the, you know, Adam Scott. When we talk about these swings of like, that's my favorite swing. It's like Freddie Couples, but with almost more power, I dare I say. Like, you watch this guy swing, and if you watch it in person, when we were all at the NV5 Invitational, it stopped us in our tracks. I remember Frankie being like, watch this guy hit drivers. This is unfucking believable because it looks like he's hitting half shots and they're 188 ball speed. It's crazy. It looks like he's doing a, like a practice routine or like some sort of, you know, te- it looks like a teacher was like, hey, sw- slow your swing down to 20% and let's just see your mechanics. And that's his full swing. And it goes 191 ball speed to 200 ball speed. No problem. Like, I remember we were on the Corn Ferry driving range and we were talking to him and someone's like, watch this guy cruise 195 right now. And I was like, no way. And he heard the guy say that. He's like, you want to see 200? And he just like <laughs> didn't look any different. And we were just like, yeah, that looks like 200 miles an hour. It's fucking crazy. It's like this guy's out of control balls. When I swing as hard as I can, I think it's like 175 <laughs> ball speed. It's like the first, the hardest I've ever hit a golf ball ever. I feel like my arms are going to fall off my body. He's cruising. The high 190s. And we did follow him, and he was one of the guys who, I mean, we were so nervous that first day at the Corn Ferry event. Like, can we talk to these guys? This means a lot to them. We don't want to fuck up their whole thing by being here. And he was one of the guys who was like, talk to me as much as you want. Like, I'll do interviews. I'll do the whole thing. So um, he's got a very, very bright future with that attitude and with that game, obviously. God, that golf swing is sweet. So he's into everything now, Dan? Everything. He's into, yeah, he's Ooh. into, he's into the masters. He's into, Ooh. uh, the other majors. He's into all the designated events. His schedule completely changes. You know, now he's into, instead of, oh, I'm going to play Honda and then, you know, probably get into players. Now he's into Bay Hill. He's into players. He's into Augusta. So, and this is, this is one of the things that the tour will say is like, yeah, we created these designated events, but we left the spots open for a guy like this to get really hot and to play his way into it and to become one of these new stars. And it can happen fast. You just got to go out there and earn it. Shout out to Smiley Kaufman on his podcast. He had Jake Knapp on pre this tournament and was like, what tournaments are you playing this year? Are you playing in Mexico? And Jake Knapp's like, yeah, I am. And Smiley lit up. He's like, brother, send it there. He was like, that's your golf course. And then um, Jake basically was like, yeah, I looked at all the golf courses where Guys who won were similar to me. And he's like, I saw Tony Finau like dominated in Mexico. And I'm just like, I'm just going to go there and do the same thing. I don't really have to hit it straight. I just have to hit it far. And, um, and Smiley was like, yeah, guys are going to have four five, six irons into part fours. And you're going to have like an eight or nine iron. You're just going to win. And it was like a really, it's a really cool clip of Smiley being like, that's it. Yeah. That golf course is a field. He hit two fairways the whole uh, the whole final round. I That's saw Justin a crazy tweet that. I saw Justin Ray tweet his first guy to win in like 30 years hitting two or less fairways in the final round. Oh. I guess when you're fine at 320, you can afford What's to his miss name a few is fairways. What's coming over that? Um, my psycho. Uh, oh, oh Fawcett. Scott Fawcett. Scott Fawcett. Like, my psycho. Come he's going to love, he's gonna love that psycho. description. My right, psycho. He's, a, yeah. he's a psycho, but he's our psycho, you know? <laughs> he's our psycho, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think... stand for any of this stuff. If he gets into like a massive fight on Twitter, I do not stand for him, but um he did a great video with me with his decade golf stuff but i think he loves that shit he's like who gives a fuck where it's going send it as far as you can and gain as much yardage as you possibly can bryson won a major doing that it worked very funny to hear that because i was texting with a pga tour player on thursday who was like this is the worst course we play all year i fucking hate this golf course <laughs> and he actually ended up playing pretty well but i think the reason is because if you're one of those guys that likes tough golf courses where you got to hit fairways this fucking ain't it and jake knapp went out there and ripped it up so um unreal for him that his whole schedule changes he's been playing in all the tournaments wild to think like we just mentioned the masters like the masters is coming up in a little over a month we've got the players championship in 
two weeks, we're going to be at the Players' Championship. Maybe a Tiger Woods will be there. Speaking of Tiger Woods, Trent mentioned it earlier. Uh, Charlie Woods came out, broke 90. My guy, my king, really, truly. I, I tweeted, I was like, I would Spin kill zone. for that scorecard. Even the 12 on seven, I would take it. Years, we've been, we've been grinding, doing a whole series about breaking 90. Charlie Woods comes out, first attempt, bang, no problem whatsoever. So impressive stuff from Charlie Woods. I... I would, there were reports that he was getting heckled by this gallery of like 50 people. Of, I, you know, I'm seeing different, some stuff that he was just asked to sign autographs during the round, which is obviously annoying. Um, but that overall, you know, if he's actually out there getting heckled, he's 15 years old, uh, absolutely preposterous. But um, look, if you're going to sign up, you're going to be Tiger Woods' uh, son. You're going to go out there. People are going to focus on what you shoot. So I saw some comments being like, this is creepy and cringy that anybody's put. He tried to qualify for a professional event, so people were going to respond to it. Uh, he had a 12 on a hole. That's just going to make it tough. So if you just take that 12 away, he shot, what, like 78, 79? Not that bad. Uh, so, look, it's he's 15. He's trying to get out there, trying to get the reps in, as you can imagine. But, um, but yeah, that was kind of a stunning number when I saw that number come across my radar. Those people who are saying, I'll leave him, like, I, I, I get the sense that he could get his PGA tour card and miss a cut. And then people would tweet him out. They're like, he's, you know, let, let this guy become a professional golfer. Like, let him do his thing. It's, he's stepping into the spotlight. I am curious because they had, they had cameras, uh, in the parking lot, uh, when he showed up, which were like PGA tour cameras. This was not like some guy showed up and, you know, shot it on his personal camera. This was the PGA tour Senate camera crew. Tiger is like, you know, by all accounts, one of the guys who's running the PGA Tour. Do you think he like knows this and is cool with it, or do you think he's like going to say to them, "Hey, like let let go of my son a little bit"? Did they do you capture think anything? I didn't see any footage. Yeah, there was footage of him getting to the golf course, like walking. Yeah, he with... was like the first guy arriving. I remember that. And his and first so, swing, he he twirled the fuck out of his first drive. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm just I'm curious, like what Tiger thinks about the whole thing, and I would love to see. I saw some of these comments too, and I agree. Like I would I would pay money to see what Tiger's conversation with with him was like after he shot 86 what does tiger Woods say to his son after that is he you know is he saying you got to learn from this is like what's what what's he like in that role we, we don't really know it's got to be a little bit of humble pie for charlie i mean he's been on quite the run as like a 12 year old to 15 year old in, in terms of golf he has sort of the you know the fast lane pass to success of golf just based off of his name and his teacher and his dad um, and then all of a sudden you come out and you're all on your own and you really don't have any of the stuff that like the aura around you to really save like your name and your game and you shoot an 86. It's gotta be a little bit of like, oh shit. All right. This is like how the real world works. Like I have to actually get the ball in the hole and like guys out here are really fucking good. And I'm sure that's actually probably better off for his career and what he's trying to aspire to do to go out there and kind of like get humbled a little bit in the game. I mean, an 86 is going to stick with him for a long time. He did not There's want to shoot in 86, regardless of what nope. he shot in that one hole. No way. There was so, probably one tournament director who wanted to give him an invite and saw the 86 and was like, damn it, I, I yeah. can't really get away but with like, it now. <clears throat> you know, he's not right. he's not aspiring to be a chef or uh, an accountant. <laughs> yeah. He's aspiring to be a professional golfer. And this is anyone that's saying it's cringy or it's scary or it's like it's you shouldn't be on the kid for that. It's like, dude, he, he wants this shit now. And everyone around him wants this shit. What's the difference between him and, and now anyone trying to go for a PGA tour card. This is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get into a tournament. Him playing in a qualifier is kind of the step out moment for me. Like him, those other tournaments and the PNC is different. The Nota Begay invitationals, whatever they're called. Those are different. This one where it's like, all right, man, you're going to try to qualify for a PGA tour event that the eyeballs are going to be there. If you make a 12 and shoot an 86, people are going to talk about it. Like this is you're now you're out there. It's not a scramble with your dad anymore. It's not, you know, it's like your ball in the hole, as we know, is a totally different game. Uh, tournament golf, completely different game. Look, I think it's just inevitable, and I hope that Charlie Woods' professional golf career pans out. I hope he and Tiger are, like, playing in the Masters together. It'd be incredible. He is just going to end up being a massive YouTube golf star. That's just what it's going to be. He's got, he's got the name. Huge. He's Charlie fucking Woods. He's got the aesthetically pleasing swing. He's got the mannerisms of tiger woods and by all accounts he is a fan of that kind of stuff he loves that world he loves youtube golf um he's shown up with certain head covers and certain items that clearly showcase it he's right at that age that follows and watches that stuff so i think inevitably charlie woods is going to end up being just a massive youtube golf star he's probably going to make a hilarious amount of money doing it he's probably going to be incredibly famous doing it and his scores aren't going to matter as much so i think he's probably going to end up going down that path but yeah 
probably not the worst thing for him to have a little bit of humble pie. I think the 86 is, I think it'll be good for him. I think, or, I mean, it goes one of two ways, right? Either it's, that's a kick in the ass and it's like, all right, I got a real, this is, this game's hard. My dad at points made it look really easy. And I thought, you know, I can be young and just as good as him. Or he's just like, all right, maybe this, maybe I'm not made for this and I'm just going to be a YouTube golfer. It's going to, this is a, this is a pivotal point in Charlie Woods's very, very young career. Well, it depends on where his game is truly at. Like, if he is out there expecting to shoot a 66 and qualify for a PGA Tour event, this is just a disastrous setback in his game. But if he's, like, not quite there yet and he needs that extra push, this will be good for him. Yeah. Like, this this will teach him a lot. Like, it's going to be – I mean, either way, it's going to teach him a lot. But, yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm not, like, down on Charlie Woods. I mean, they got, it's one bad round of golf. Everyone has right. he had one bad hold. I don't know what happened on that hold. Did he just keep, like, just – hitting it out of bounds and just reloading. I mean, yeah, really all it takes is guess. three OB balls and then like you just make a bogey from there or whatever. Yeah. Those Florida courses, like, you know, we've all we've all played some of them where it's like, you know, houses left, water right, and right. like you if, just if pull you, three and like you're yeah. you're hitting fucking six off the tee. You're like, all right, now I just make like a six off here and it's just a twelve. It's like yeah. not that it's big like, of a deal. But when you're like playing that card game like riding the bus and you just can't get off it, that's the exact like you've standing on that tee. You're just like, I can't I can't hit one and play, guys. I don't know what the fuck you want me to do. I would love, I think, maybe the most fascinating conversation for any golf nut you could possibly listen to would be that car ride home with Tiger and Charlie after that 86. Like, what does Tiger Woods try to learn from Charlie in terms of he's like, all right, what, you know, what were you feeling differently once you got on the tee, once you made that first double, once your first swing went haywire? Like, talk to me. What were you thinking? Tiger trying to, you know, talk Charlie through, hey, I know on the range, I know back home at Medalist, when you're shooting 69, 70, that, you know, you've got these feels and these feels. What were you feeling out there that was completely different? And then Tiger's able to impart the kind of wisdom being like, yep, I totally know what you mean. That conversation would be fucking incredible to hear Tiger talking through Charlie after an 86. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully he rebounds. Hopefully he learns from this. And hopefully the Charlie Woods thing continues because it's just fun to watch. Speaking of master's invites, I saw a quick little article about our friend Angel Cabrera. Still, he was, I believe last week he got into the Champions Tour event, um, been invited to a Corn Fairy Tour event, but the Masters still has him listed as past champions not playing. Uh, I saw that, I believe the uh, Champions Tour like director came on and said, look, he's done his time in prison. We believe everybody kind of deserves a chance once they've uh, uh, you know, done what they're required to do. And we're happy to welcome him back out here. Do you think there's any chance on how Cabrera plays in the Masters ever again? I do. Yeah, I, I saw he almost won a tournament back home in Argentina. I, you've, on Hell Cabrera, you want to talk about interesting careers? This guy won the Masters. He beat Tiger Woods at Oakmont down the stretch. He lost in the ripping playoff darts. in another Masters. Yeah, ripping darts to Adam Scott. Johnny Miller got in trouble if you guys remember this because he was saying on national television where there are a lot of children watching. He was like, oh. He's smoking them cigarettes. Those are good for the nerves coming up 18. It was basically <laughs> like a Marlboro advertisement. I Yeah, I think I think he will play again. I think, look, he, he went in jail. He probably had three years of staring against a fucking wall. And I'm sure going back to Augusta National and playing golf sounds pretty damn good for him. I don't see why he wouldn't. If, he, if they're letting him do it, he's going to do it. That would be my guess. Speaking of staring at a wall, you see fucking Chris Klemmer, uh, our coworker, is going to be in solitary confinement. I think the first week of March. He's yeah. just going to sit in a room from Monday for, to Friday. Why? What, what happened? Just, you know. Content, baby. Views, baby. <laughs> that's insane. That's, that's the Bro. most views over everything thing I've heard in a long time. They just put you in a room. Monday to Friday. Yeah. Uh, is he eating? I mean, I guess he's eating. I, I don't know. From what I can understand, he is. I don't know if he's eat, I, They'll probably give him food, but he's going to have, like, challenges where he can win items throughout the He the can stream. win, like, light? Like, what can he win? I, I don't know. Be in a little <laughs> box of a room of in water. the office, in the office downstairs, we have that like studio office in the New York City uh, yeah. location. Yep. And it's just going to be like uh, probably the size of this room, like for a week, from Monday to Friday. When you get to Wednesday and you got two more days, like what do you do with yourself? God bless the people that have to be like on the back end of that that stream too. Like whoever, I mean, I know it's going to be a rotating cast, but my God. What was the uh, Mr. Beast? The guy stayed in like a grocery store or something for like oh, yeah, 40 was, days. I think, he's still, like I think he's still there. <laughs> Mr. Beast was, I, he said something like, there is a guy, he's doing an interview and he was like, there's a guy somewhere in the country in the middle of an abandoned but full grocery store that I said would get like 
$10,000 a day for as many days as he can stay in there. And I, we never got an update. That was like six months ago. That guy's probably still in that grocery store. He's, he's made still there. A, a, a couple he's of making million bucks. He's making $365,000 a year, right? Is that right? Oh, no, be, that would be $1,000 a day. That's be $3.6 million. A year. And a full grocery store. So it's... So Mr. Beast is okay with giving him... Let's say ten million dollars if that guy lives in there for three years. Straight. If he's at a Whole Foods or something with a hot bar, he's got some staying power. Yeah, but I don't, does it have any like power in there? Is there? I mean, yeah, it's, like it's got to be livable. Right? It's not like a full staff in there, is there? That'd be unbelievable. But it's it's got to be livable just... because otherwise, then it's like at some point it turns into a Saw movie. Which I think I think if somebody piss off Mr. Beast enough at some point. He's going to turn into an evil guy. I think it's pretty close to a Saw movie. I think he's like, I'm going to give you $10,000 if you can survive one day in here. And he's going to survive as long as he can. Right. To, to say $10,000 a day, it's going to be pretty fucking bad. Yeah. Yeah, it must <clears throat> be fucking terrible in there. And just like a week, it's like, I got $70,000 and I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, yeah. That's how bad it is. But it can't be that bad because it, if it crosses over, isn't it then illegal? Like if it's the conditions are too bad, you can't just... You're not forcing. I'm someone, sure obviously. Mr. Beast has quite the legal team. That's like, I'm listen, sure you're you're, you're setting I, yourself up for this. I, really I gotta go watch this video. That's why it gets a ten hundred thousand million views an episode because he's so fucking good at this. I, I really think this is where the internet's going, and Jerry After Dark has really tapped into this. Where and then the free throw contest, and now whatever Mr. Beast is doing in his house of horrors, just like continuous live streams of people doing it crazy shit. Like I think Until that's you where. Die. It's, Right, I think that's like where it's all going because it gets so many views. People are so interested. It's 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 really that's kind of where it's all going. I think. Just to finish, to put a bow on that. Did you see what Dave is doing to Mincy? Mincy's playing poker right now, and Mincy's an unbelievable poker player. They call him the Destroyer, and he's playing in this poker event and missed the combine. And uh, Dave, while Mincy is. Mincy's leading this poker tournament and the and the total winnings could be a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And he's leading it with like fifteen players left, right? The minimum cash at this point has to be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars at this point. And Dave has made the announcement while Mincy is playing and probably doesn't even know that he made this, that all of his winnings will now be going to the winner of the Barstool Combine because he chose poker over Barstool content. And that has made me laugh so hard since I saw that announcement this morning that Mincy's like, ah, I just can't do it. <laughs> right? Well, I know Mincy knows because right before we hopped on, I actually didn't get a chance to watch it. Dave called Mincy to tell him. Oh. So Dave was in the car telling Mincy. So, yeah, no, I mean, even if Mincy so wins $120,000, <laughs> whatever it is, that's going to like Francis Ellis or Will Compton or whoever wins the combine, <laughs> which is first. Tough. First, Dave said that his his winnings will be deducted from his yearly salary. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like you go forward and someone just fucking pulls you back, man. So funny. That's so funny. Poor oh, Mincy. God. Yep. That's so good. Poor Mincy. So so good. I was I was laughing at uh, oh, on the unnamed God. show last week when Dave was like, "Yeah, Mincy's the one guy that we have that I told him he just." can't even talk about DraftKings. And Mincy is like a gambling guy. And he's like, we're not even going to allow him to talk about it. And then he goes, after I had the meeting about how he's not allowed to talk about it, he went out and posted something where he completely fucked it up about DraftKings immediately. So that's just Mincy, man. Um, all right, let's do a little from the gallery action. Uh, from the gallery, reminder to email us. We need a bunch of uh, we need a bunch of new ones. We need a refresher. So foreplay at barstoolsports.com. Shoot us an email. Title it from the gallery. Put anything in there that you got. Hypothetical question, uh, story, whatever it might be. Try to keep it short. Fireball, our great friends uh, who had quite a few of those this last weekend. They're delicious. Are the sponsors of From the Gallery. Uh, when you find yourself stressing over golf, whatever it might be, your swing, your game, the group in front of you, Fireball Whiskey is there to help. Fireball 50 milliliter shooters are the perfect shot for the golf course. Sneak a bunch in your bag. They're ready to go whenever you need them. Uh, plus, no shot glass or chaser needed. Crack it, uh, knock it back. You're good to go. Fireball's iconic cinnamon flavor tastes fire, goes down easy, making it the ultimate crowd pleaser. Fireball is the uh, birdie shot of golf and the number one shot in the U.S. If you're feeling like upping the ante on the course this weekend, make sure to grab the new Fireball Birdie Shot Club. It's literally a golf club filled with Fireball nips. First one from Josh says, is it possible for the PGA Tour to somehow acquire the rights to a major? Could they become partners or something with the PGA of America? Could they somehow grab hold 
of one of the big four events each year could live potentially do the same thing for that matter is it possible for anybody to buy a major championship this got me thinking like obviously the first instinct is like no but it got me thinking of like you know the 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 women's us open uh has sold like the naming rights before uh and and the women's major championships have sold the the naming rights where they're not named just the the open championship it's named like the whatever it is is it like the omega women's yeah. open or there's something a, like yeah, that i think there's like the aig women's open Craft yeah that's Bisco for a long AIG time yeah or something like that and so it got me thinking like what if Liv did go to i don't know the u.s open or the pga and say you know we'll give you guys a hundred million dollars to have a 10-year naming rights and some like affiliation with the pga where it became like the live golf PGA championship or something like that. What if they offered them a such a deal that those, those events just couldn't fucking say no to it. Yeah. There was the, back in the day, the PGA tour, I believe the story goes, they had a chance to buy the Ryder cup and they opted for like to build up the players championship instead. Oh, so it, there was a, there I mean, was a chance love the players championship. Yeah. The fucking year on right now. Go by <laughs> Jesus Christ. There was a chance a long time ago for that to happen. It's interesting because apart from the masters, you know, those, the three entities that run the majors for the men, so the you know the USGA, the PGA of America, and the RNA, that's how they fund their whole operation. Uh, is these tournaments, and they've kept them a certain way, brandless for a while. They do sell like you know, there's obviously a ton of corporate sponsorships on the advertising side, and then the, you know the hospitality tents. But there has not been a major that has sold its name just yet. And that's been kind of one of the differentiating factors of the majors is like they're not the Wells Fargo Championship. There, I don't really know the answer. I guess everything has a price, right? There's no like Someday rule against will. it, so to Someday speak. Someday they will. Feels like the PGA Championship would be is right to be bought. You know, if if you're looking to make a splash, like if it were the the PGA Championship presented by Live, that people are like, holy shit, man! And they 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 get broken off like a hundred million dollars. The other ones, they feel like they got enough juice that they don't need it. Um, not even that the PGA Championship needs it, but if it were looking for for headlines and a boost. Being sponsored by one of the tours would be pretty incredible. The PIF PGA Championship has a decent ring to it. It's not bad. No, I I know that like the U.S. Open and talking with the USGA over the years, the USGA has been offered, there it goes. you know, naming rights like offerings worth, you know, tens of millions of dollars before. They obviously haven't considered it. But it is wild to think about the fact that pretty much every tournament except the majors, the players, have sold the naming rights to the event. The Memorial Tournament sticks out where it's still called the Memorial, but it's like the Memorial presented by Workday is kind of what, you know, whatever it's been. And you got to think with how commercialized everything is, you got to think with how much money everybody's demanding at this point. At some point, one of these majors, I think, will cave and give some sort of naming rights to somebody. And how much would the general public even notice? Like if it were the PJ Championship brought to you by, like you said, Rolex or one of those, I, it doesn't. You could you could tell somebody on the street that that already happened, and they'd be like, "Oh, I didn't even. I had no idea." It's I. I the only the bigger deal would be if it were bought by one of the the tours. That would be like, "Oh, then that's very different." But if it were again, if it were Omega, if it were Rolex, if it were one of the huge banks, I don't think the general public would really know. And whichever major did it would have an extra thirty million dollars in their pocket. I'm actually surprised that yeah, it hasn't it's happened. I know. Yeah, it's the difference is when it becomes like part of the actual name of the tournament. So like the Arnold Palmer Invitational has been the Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard for like a little bit of a long time, but it's still the Arnold Palmer Invitational. It would be like cuz when they buy these things, they are contractually obligated to refer to it by that name every single time they mention the tournament, right? Like we talk about this is a Cognizant Classic, like it's the Cognizant Classic, right? you have to call it the Cognizant Classic. Um so yeah, I think it would be it would be a little jarring if it was like the PGA Tour major championship. Yeah, that's I like it. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. That's like Daniel's response there. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, Danny responds. It's really, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. I, uh, this is a dumb no. question. Does the R and A run the European Tour? Uh, no, there's a there's a, pl- a thing called the European Tour Group that runs the European Tour, and they own the Ryder Cup. Yeah. I was trying to think if the RNA was just like better than the PGA Tour and the fact that they 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 own a tour and they were able to get a major, but I guess they don't. They're similar to the USGA. Then they just they only yeah, run the it's major. Very similar. That's right. I got you. Yeah, they're sort of just the USGA of like the UK. 
right? Is that the best way to kind of say it, Dan? Yeah, I would say that the yeah, USDA is the rules. RNA of the U.S. Right, right, right. First. Hey. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. gonna, yeah. You actually saved us with that because people are, would be very mad about that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you came out one year and it was like the fireball U.S. Open or something, I mean, I think people would lose their minds over something like that. I guess it does <laughs> yeah. depend on the sponsor, too. Yeah, it does. That's true. That's true. Uh, Michael says, if Tiger's golf career was 18 holes, what hole is he on currently? Oh man, that's you're asking us to throw to throw dirt. Um, or well, I'm I mean, or he's, to be optimistic. What damn. is he? He's 47, right? 47, 48, 48, 48. He didn't look super strong at Riviera. I'll just put it that way. He was under the weather. He was sick, Dan. So you you're saying what are you saying, Riggs? 14, 13, 15, 17. Whoa, fairway? whoa, 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 whoa! Easy now, easy now. These are all pretty I, late. These are I all pretty would late. say I, I will think about it this way: if any golfer professional golfer at 48 years old they're clearly on the back nine do we agree on that mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. yes yep. yes i'm I think he's on the con- fourth i think he's walking up to the 14th tee box the back nine. all right I'll i think he's walking these. up to the 14th <laughs> tee box when you're on the 14th hole you you feel you're like you've played close a long done. you feel like you've played a long round of golf and then you do the math you start doing like oh you have to play four, 14 counts as once you're like 14 15 16 17 8 you have five holes of golf left that's a long that's that's possibly an hour that's an hour and 10 minutes it is true on the on the 14th hole that's the the most common hole where i'm counting on my fingers that's absolutely true when i'm like 14 15 yeah you don't you're you're still being like i don't know how many holes are left really if you ask me it's five or it's six or it's who knows i would say i think that's pretty close 14th tee walking up to it not even to it yet because you also know his 18th hole he's gonna win something that's he's the Derek jeter he's got the whole story the tom brady it's just like something's going to happen on, on in that final game, that final stretch. He's going to do something big. So you just know that there's still fireworks to happen. And I, I, I see the 14th to the 18th being a nice little um, bookend to an amazing career. Yeah, I, 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 if we're thinking of this as Augusta National and he's on the 14th tee, he's still got three solid par fours. He's got a very eagleable par five. He's got a par three where he has had some iconic shots before. So we'll say, we'll say 14. I'll concede that he's on the back. Nine. Dan's got him tapping in on 18 right now. It's like, yeah. I think he's got like a, like a four foot slider for par on 16 green. Okay. It's getting late. Okay. Uh, again, he's 48. You're, but again, you can see the clubhouse from there. You know, you can see the clubhouse, you're ordering yeah. food, you know, you get yeah. to pick your cert. Yeah. You're, you're starting to think about an IPA after the round. You maybe you know got that mean? phone on the tee box on 17. You call in a chicken club or something like that. Yes. Yeah, Bill right. wanted 50 people. People forget that. I get that their bodies are different, but yeah. Minus two fusion surgeries. Well, Phil, you know, Tiger's also just a uh, better shape and has been eating better. I think his whole life. So there's positive. Better and golfer. To everything. Yeah. Better player, better career, better look at, you know, just everything. Um, all right. Brett. Brett says, what is the best song of all time, objectively? Oh, it's, I mean, <laughs> uh... This is a, literally the hardest question in the world. Star Spangled Banner. Oh, Hell nice. yeah, brother. Didn't, like, didn't, didn't the scientists, like, put, like, um, Africa by Toto onto, like, that Ooh. golden... I thought it was, oh, it might have been that. I was thinking, what's sep- uh, September? Earth, Wind, Fire. Remember? Yeah, people, I think that was... I remember seeing a poll somewhere where like this is the best song ever. But again, it's a great song. It's so arguably hard. the most subjective question you can ask a person. I can give you thirteen Foo Fighters <laughs> songs, twenty Beatles songs. I was on a bachelor party this last weekend, and "Bees in the Trap" by N- Nicki Minaj was the number one song of that weekend. So you got to throw that. Yeah, you got to throw that. Parties there. always have an anthem. I feel like I'm trying to remember. A bees in the trap. Bees, bees in the trap. That could be it. That's that a could horrible be the best. song. That could be the um, best song. Of all time. <laughs> that's a horrible song. Did you um? Did you guys hear? Did you guys listen to those big booty mixes by the the two friends? They always come out with one. Oh yeah, two. the new one's actually pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah, one of the kids, uh, Matt. They actually both went to my high school. They all oh, wow. both went to the same high school I went to. I um, yeah. I missed that. I'm I. What was it called? Girl talk? Is that a thing? Yeah, that was like the, yeah, girl talk. They used to make that mixes was too. Well, yeah. I'm old enough where that was my mixes. I think it's the same thing as the big booty mix. Um, it's good. I mean, yeah. it's a little bit too much like EDMy for me. Like, I would love for it to just slow down for like out of the hour for like. 10 I get minutes. overstimulated for sure, but it's good. It's good. I mean, if you listen to it in the right setting, it's fun. 
Like we were playing, we went over and had some drinks at a friend's house and we were playing this horse racing game, which is just so much fucking fun. It's like dice with cards and you have the little horses on the track. And when you roll the dice, you move the horse up. And if you have that card, if it gets to the end, you win. And like 12s only have to go two spots because 12 is harder to roll. But seven, you have to go like 15 spots because it's the most common number to roll. Super fun. You bet on it. And we had that big booty mix going on in the background because we had six or eight people getting kind of crazy about the horse racing. And it was perfect. Like each time it, it hit to a new drop, you're like, oh, fuck. Like it's in the background. You're like, oh, shit. That's a fucking sick mix. That's really what music is. It's it's very it's in the context of what you're doing. You can't yeah. pick. It's yeah. impossible. Right now, you can't pick the best song ever because it's like, I'm just sitting here on a Monday morning. I don't know what the best song is, but if I'm like at a bar drinking or it, it's really just context dependent. So the hardest question you could have asked, Brett, is like, that. is there like a Beethoven song that's like, like classically the most perfect song? You know what I mean? Like, how do you even what, what's the argument for it? It's all relative. It's all your own thinking because like music goes on forever. And like, where do you even judge it? The hottest drops in golf gear that sells out in just minutes. We are talking about swag, golf. They got head covers, putters, accessories, apparel. We went uh, during the Phoenix Open, hung out with the swag golf guys. These head covers that they drop, they sell out literally in seconds, in minutes. Uh, I got like an Anchorman one for my putter. That's incredibly cool. They got thousands, like literally thousands of um, of threads, I guess they're called. They sew thousands of threads. I think one of them, they said 200,000 threads sewed into just like one head cover. So the amount of detail these guys put into this stuff, it's hot in the streets. It's unique. It's what's cool about golf nowadays. Uh, they're made in the USA, curated collections based on PGA events and all kinds of cool stuff going on. So swag golf, you got to get involved with swag golf. Yeah, their stuff's unbelievably cool. We got a bunch of it when we were in Scottsdale, and um, yeah, I, I, the colors pop, and and it's one of those conversational pieces that, like, when you have something cool like that on your bag, you have a conversation about it with your partner or the person that's in your cart. They're like, "What the hell is that thing?" You tell them it's a swag golf head cover. It gets it gets you a long way. It starts you off on a really good uh, on a really good foot for the day. Dude, they got a duck hunter. Uh, cartridge like old school Nintendo cartridge uh, driver head cover and a little ball marker that I got there. I even know they made those and they're unbelievably sick. So make so sure that cool. you visit swaggolf.com or follow at Swag Golf Co on all socials to be in the loop on the latest drops. Make sure you're doing both of those things. Swaggolf.com, follow at Swag Golf Co. You're going to see the stuff. If you don't follow them already, you're going to see the stuff. That's what social school for. That's what Instagram's cool for. You can see the pictures and videos of all their new stuff. Their next drop is happening on February 29th at 12 p.m. Central. You do not want to miss out. That's February 29th, 12 p.m. Central. Visit SwagGolf.com. Make sure you follow at SwagGolfCo on all socials. A week and a half ago, I went to a karaoke bar, a dive karaoke bar with a handful of people. Fucking love karaoke. We had a crew like five of us, and it was a, uh, it was like a, a Wednesday night, and there was nobody in this karaoke bar except there was one couple that were like middle aged couple, and then our crew of like five, and then one other like young kid sitting at the end of a bar by himself, and our crew would go up and do like two or three songs in a row, and it was like Cheryl Crow and like that kind of stuff, and then this middle aged couple. We're just doing like aggressive gothic like negative songs. Wow. And like the one the woman was a horrible singer, but she was super into it. So it would be all boppy, like Cheryl Crowy type stuff. And then every four or five songs she would get up there and be like, and death and like oh my so god. Shit. Like Black and Sabbath. It was, it was the like, funniest shit I've ever the seen. The wedding singer life. song. Somebody yeah. kill me, please. <laughs> we I, were thinking great movie by the way Fuck. oh really good um we were equating it to like when he uh in forgetting sarah marshall where he does like the dracula song yeah. oh yeah and that's Die. kind of like what it felt like up there uh but it was I, li- so I, it is- I like when i prefer when people are bad at karaoke you'll see those videos that'll go out where people are like way too good and it's like i you're just trying to show off now i need you to be right in the middle i mean you can be really really bad but i there's a ceiling to it where if you're too good it's like all right we get it like you you decided I was going to come to this karaoke bar and I was going to have, I was going to impress people. I need like <laughs> drunk people who are horrible. That's 
depends that's the on best what karaoke. You're, dep- you, I think you need a couple. You need a little bit of each in the crew, though. You need someone to go out there and blow the fucking doors off the place, and you're like, "Holy shit, that was unbelievable!" Because everyone's singing with that person, and it's very exciting. And then you have the people that just can't get up there, and you want you want it to be over. You're like, uh, "This is it's like watching bad comedy." It's like I just need this to be over now. And then the the, the majority of the night needs to just be the people having fun that like just get through the song. But I think you need all three tiers. I fucking love karaoke, man. I think it's so much. I'm fucking lukewarm fun. on it because I get embarrassed. But didn't your me too? Didn't your um your dad get you like a karaoke machine or something as a housewarming gift? Well, yeah. I mean, this is exposing a little bit too much, but like I sing karaoke to myself like probably like three times a week. Is what that the weirdest now? thing you guys have what ever heard? What, what are you <laughs> talking about? Just just to get some some voice practice. Frank, or what so, are you about? <laughs> all right, so what? we have this huge karaoke machine, right? And from time to time, like if we have a party, I'll take it out. And it's the first thing my dad got for this house. Not a speck of dust on this thing. Here. You use this thing a lot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, when we have a party, we'll have it out. And the last time we had a party was my dad's 65th birthday. I have not put it back since. I've left it in the corner that it was out. In, and this is January 16th. So, this has been quite a while now, right? Month and, um, mm-hmm. month and a half of this thing being out Long like time. in the dining room in the corner. And... uh and I'll go up there now over the last month and a half if I'm like bored or something or if we're not traveling and I have like an hour or two and Hannah's not home yet, I'll fucking turn that thing on and I'll start singing. And I've done that 13 times, 14 <laughs> times. I mean, listen, man, my, it's a good way to process, kill time. my thought process was like, all right, I'm, I want to sing a song or I want to listen to a song. Why wouldn't I just sing along with the words up there? And it's got the backup singers. It's fucking electric. It's so much fun. What you do in the privacy of your own home is your business. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. As, long, as long as you don't come after my kids, you know, trying to get them to sing karaoke, then and you're fine. And you also have Listen, the argument man. that you are, you're in pop punk, you're in a band, and you do the Practice. vocals sometimes, you're keeping the, the vocal cords warm. Yeah. It's, you could be doing way worse things. Definitely. Alone in your time. home. And you yeah. still yeah. might be, right. but this one's not so bad. Right. My go-to right. first song that I sing is Peaceful Easy Feeling by the Eagles. That's a good warm-up. Peaceful. Didn't yeah. your Yotu song used to be uh, You Can Have the Crown by Sturgill? I love that song. That's usually a good bar song because people don't really know it, but it gets the people going because it's quick, and I know every single word, and I can, like, nail it. Um, Yeah, we, can, we don't have to keep talking about this. but yeah, I got a little mini announcement to make. Okay. Oh, we uh, Danny announcement. new Netflix... Uh, yeah, Danny announcement. Danny announces the new uh, full swing trailer just came out. I'm I'm gonna go out and say this because I think the embargo came finished this morning for features. Foreplay makes an appearance. Wow! Ooh. Clap it up. There's a little bit of four. There's a little bit of foreplay uh, in the uh, in episode three. So Massive. everyone needs to watch episode that's three. That's huge. If not anything else, that's, that's yeah. really. Do we big. get to add that to our IMDb page now? That's an interesting question. It's an interesting question. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're in the show, so they say foreplay. There's a, there's a couple we get a really credit nice at the end. Is, is our name at the end? No, but it does say foreplay on the screen, like very clearly when nice. we're when, really we're, nice. when we're on screen. Yeah, it doesn't say barstool, but it says foreplay. Okay, we'll take it. Um, People we'll take see it, us; they so. think barstool. I'm I'm guessing. I would hope that is the case. We're all wearing barstool gear. Yeah. I so. need to make I need to make an IMDb page. I've been on a, a couple shows now. Me I was too. on fuck yeah. I was on a, bar, a full episode of Bar Rescue. I was a, a character on it. I have to be. I, that has to be yeah. worth the credit. I agree. I think you should do it. It's they, like user generated. I think like Wikipedia. I think you can. Just I can do just it, yeah. do it. I don't want to do it myself. I don't I'd know. Rather, I'd rather type in my name and have. Oh, I mean, someone come is on, listening. Bronzy, someone could, is listening. I know you want to do that yourself. Bronzy, yourself I, I'd on never there. even thought of that. We definitely we have a couple things on there. I was. I yeah. I was on The Bachelor. Like, let's get our yeah. IMDb pages going. All right. Someone wants to do that for us. Please do. I'm hearing this uh, this season of The Bachelor is like one of the one of the highest reviewed ones. People it's love this. It's so guy. good. It's so yeah. good. And I mean, you guys should watch it because the guy looks exactly like Brendan Jones. So you're basically watching Amazing. Brendan Jones on a reality TV show. Because not only does he look just like Brendan, but he acts just like Brendan. He's like goofy and he makes puns and he likes movie. It's gotta quotes. be infuriating for Brendan to watch. I know. I've said this already. It's I know. like you're watching your. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's very happy. We love we love his fiance and all that stuff. We do, we do. She I love Brennan. Great life, great. I'm just choice. saying, if you're perfect. talking, if you're just talking about like you're watching yourself be the Bachelor, which is quite literally like every guy's, I guess, dream. Oh, you have like 20 of the hottest women in the world 
fighting over you and you're just like hooking up with all of them it's, it's actually crazy it's like it's he he goes into a world where like rules don't exist you know what i mean like you're yep. just yes. like it's insane that but it's this season, accepted, especially by the female community, that that show is accepted. <laughs> it's well, it like goes both ways. All these girls it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I'm just saying. Equal opportunity. And yeah. but it, this season's got the juice for sure. Joey is great. Like he's a great guy. It's a great cast of ladies. Um, we're getting down to it now, and so it's it's a great season. Yeah, I had, the last couple of seasons haven't felt like it's had the juice because the leads, the Bachelor, or the Bachelorette, haven't been great. Um, but Joey is great, and yeah, if you if you're not watching it, I highly recommend it. Trent from The Bachelor. Trent's been doing a lot of those girl rooms dances recently. I've been seeing. You've been you've been dipping yeah. your toe in the girl in the ladies' room. I've done a bunch of those. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the office. I've been doing the girls' room. I've been doing out of order. I've been doing. It's fun being around. You know, you get pulled those into doing me things. laugh. Yeah, man, dancing, shaking my shit like crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'll shake my ass for you if you ask me to do it. Yeah. I'll basically say yes to anything. So what, whatever Rhea says, and she's like, "You got to mouth this and." You got to shake your hips and you got to shake your shoulders. I'm a team player, yeah. baby. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do, I'm down for the cause. It's, just, it's uh, such a funny like juxtaposition of life. That's my whole like, thing. Bre- apparently like break 90 and then go in the girl's room and dance inside the stall. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. You got to hit all the demographics, man. We're trying to build uh, yeah. this thing up. That's right. Uh, uh, all right. I got one more for you. Uh, Greg says, what's better at 11 under on a par 70 for a 59 or a 12 under on a par 72 for a 60 59 i mean yeah. you know, that's that's golf's golden number yeah it seems the like reason it is that is because it would appear that people i mean there's definitely a, a percentage of the golf community that cares but largely people don't care you shoot a 59 you got a 59 par 72 par 70 largely i don't think people are, are nitpicking again there is there are people who will but i think if you shoot a 59 people are like that guy shot a 59 i'm not gonna look into it I personally think scoring on a par 70 course is more difficult than a 72. I think you're taking away a par five, which for me like, is way easier for my game where I can just like send it out there. I can make a mistake. I can make one mistake on a par five and still walk away with a par or maybe even a birdie. Like you can, you can, you can shank a shot on a par five and still be in play par four. It's done par three. You're dead. One of the weirder things stats is that Tiger Woods never shot 60 in a tour event. Only 60, 61 is his low. Wow. Wow. I feel like is that because he plays hard the hardest courses? Is that a part of it, you think? Probably, yeah. I mean he shot sixty one at like, you know, FedEx Cup events. It wasn't you know, right. So yeah, you're right. He wasn't he wasn't playing the a lot Cognizant of Sanderson Classic. Forms Classic. And... <laughs> That's a hard golf course, actually. Yeah, it is. I'm excited. That's this week, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The Cognizant, baby. They're back. Yeah. Cognizant classic. Cognizant classic. We what would Tiger Woods shoot screwed. at TPC Deer Run? He's been there. Zero. He's been there. We yeah. can look it up. Has he? Long He's time played ago. there. Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah, when he was yeah. like 21, really right? They got the, the infrastructure for him to play there, coming to town in the whole. It was a little year. earlier, I think. I don't know if. Yeah. I th- yeah, I, I'd have to look it up, but. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, uh, I think that's pretty much I've all got that I got. To plug like, here. I got something yes. to plug real quick. Um, so we talk about pickleball a lot, and I want to say that if you made it this far in the show and you are a pickleball player, to listen up. Um, the the launch went great. We've sold out a couple of the cities. Chicago is going to be a massive one. That'll be huge. We got a lot of people Find coming to that. Women? We found females. So women, we're still look. So women, we're still we're still getting there. We, so here's the thing. Here's the decision we have to make. We have so many guys and dudes on the waiting list for a lot of these, um, a lot of these spots that we might just. Whoa! What's happening? Am I on drugs? What the hell's going on with Trevor? I'm Ryan? throwing this. Up? Why is that doing that? The- Bro, I did what this and it, I did I did the rock and roll thing and it, and it, I, I put me at a concert. <laughs> that's an automatic. Hold that's the, the new the new button. Apple update. <laughs> <laughs> what, what dude? Do it, Frankie. It's just me. <laughs> nope. Wait. Put your thumb. Put your thumbs up, because there's there's the one. Maybe it doesn't work. We. Oh, 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 oh shit! <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> why is mine not working? Might just be. <laughs> I just updated my computer. That might be why. Dude, I'm fired up about that. <laughs> I'm fired. What it, else? It, what else can he do? <laughs> what else? What else? Oh shit. What else can Wait, he put do? Put your Alex? thumb up like this, because we had an interview once where you you put a thumb up. And, yep, and it comes up, you can't bubbles. see it, but it comes up to the side. With, that is with bubbles. What if I show my ass? If I no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that oh, that's that was wild. I did this, real. and my and I turned into a rock show. <laughs> <laughs> it's back. I'm not gonna lie. I legit thought I was having an aneurysm. Like I, I thought. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, can they see this too? Or is it just me? Wow. I was like, I can't, I couldn't even, yeah, I couldn't even process what was People happening. People who are then. listening are like, thousand shows. what is going on? People listening. Trip better yeah. show up in the recording. Put oh, his hands up and turn into a laser show for anybody that's just listening. It was one of those audio. like like on Snapchat where it says like open up your mouth and like a monkey will come out of it. It was like one of those crazy things. Oh man. <laughs> How does it know that you're doing that? Yeah, I mean, that's techno that's technology, dude. Like it's just reading everything that I'm doing. And everything. And it's like the second his fingers go like this, we're gonna shoot laser beams. Laser one? beams. Nope, two and those two. That's fucking scary. Bang, and there come the fun dude. That's fucking wild, man. That is that's that is fantastic. <laughs> man, um, what about this? Wait, do a do a heart like peace. Oh, confetti. Oh, do this. Ringo. Do the heart like um like Travis Kelsey? Yeah, like Taylor Swift. Bro, wow. What is happening? Fireworks. This is scary, up. honestly. Wait, did you go do back thumbs to the rock down? show? Go back to the rock show. I'm gonna go thumbs down. Rain. Oh. Rain happening. Aww. No, let's go back to this. Rock show, baby. Whoa, that's the thumb <laughs> turn in there. Like Iron Man, Dude, there. I yeah, that's fucking hilarious. I don't even know what we were talking but, about, but that was wild. We were talking about pickle pickle, ball, which brings <laughs> oh, sorry. the heat. Sorry. Um, no, no. What I was saying is that we have so many players that are on the wait list for the men's that we might move around some of the divisions so that we can release a lot of those off the wait list and maybe knock down some of the women's divisions or whatever. But for Jacksonville, show up. I want you guys to fill this thing up. You're one of the only cities that we can't get these mixed doubles and women's doubles, and we're coming there. We're gonna we're gonna have a full week. We've got a golf event that's sold out in, in one day. We've got players merch on site. We're gonna have all of us in Jacksonville going crazy. I think a couple of the golfers are gonna maybe come over and watch some of the pickleball because it's on the Tuesday of the players, which they're they're pumped up about. So um yeah, make sure you go to barcel-pickleball.com. Find your partner. If you do play mixed doubles in the Jacksonville area, make sure you're signing up. We have a, a lot of people waiting to get into this thing. I don't want to have to cut out groups. So um this is my final push this week to make sure that we can get the females involved in pickleball. Come on. Go, ladies. Get involved. Uh all right. I think that's all we got. We got Nelly Corda one club video coming out Wednesday. Uh I believe we're coming out Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's our time. Is that correct? Everybody, I believe so. Yeah, Think Alex so, Bush yeah. is shaking his head or nodding his head. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've got Nelly Corda video. She's awesome. She's just awesome. She's maybe the biggest star in women's golf. She's insanely impressive with her golf swing, her game, her demeanor. She made Frankie play righty when she played lefty last time. When then we did a one club. She, I believe, she takes like her six wood. Is that what she takes, Alex Bush? Yeah, six wood. She takes her six wood and hits some incredible shots out there. We try to beat her playing just with our normal full oh, bag over of the golf bunker. Clubs. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, she hits a sick that little shot incredible. over the bunker. Uh, so make sure you're ready for that on YouTube on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, go check out our gear store at barcelsports.com for the Players' Championship gear. Otherwise, we'll be back on Thursday. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.